This video is about the topic of functions. A function is basically a mapping from x to y, a rule which converts x values into y values. But there are several rules and techniques you need to be able to use. We shall be looking at the following. Definitions, i.e. domain and range, one to one and many to one. Inverse functions, composite functions, modulus functions, and finally finishing off with graph transformations. Domain and range. The domain of a function is all the x values that can be substituted into the function. We always start by writing x e r which is set notation for x is a real number. If one or more individual values are not allowed, for example 2, we write x e r x cannot equal 2. If a whole set of values are not allowed, for example negative numbers, we write x e r x is greater or equal to 0. So if there are values that aren't allowed, we sound pessimistic and write not equal to. But where a whole set of values aren't allowed, we go all optimistic and instead say what we are allowed. The range of a function is all the y values that can be created by the function. It is written very much like the domain, but with f of x instead of x. So again, we always start with f x e r, where a value is not possible like 2, we write f of x cannot equal 2, and where a whole set of values are not allowed, we might write f of x is greater or equal to 0. 1 to 1 and many to 1. If a function is described as 1 to 1, it means that each value of y can only be created by a single value of x. Some examples are shown. The basic cubic y equals x cubed is an example of a 1 to 1 function, as are linear functions, which aren't horizontal or vertical, and the exponential and logarithmic functions. If a function is described as many to one, it means that at least one value of y can be created by more than one value of x. Examples are quadratics, cubics with wiggly bits like y equals x cubed minus x, and trig functions. A many to one function can be made one to one if its domain is restricted appropriately. Case studies. We shall now look at the domain and range and one to one and many to oneness of some actual functions. f of x equals x cubed plus 2 has a domain of x e r, a range of f x e r, and it's 1 to 1. f of x equals x squared minus 6 x plus 7 has a domain of x e r, a range of f of x e r, but f of x is greater or equal to minus 2, and it is many to 1. Note that we can find the range of f x by completing the square or by differentiation. f of x equals 18 over x plus 2 has a domain of x e r x cannot equal minus 2, a range of f x e r f of x cannot equal 0 and is 1 to 1. Note that this curve has two asymptotes, one at x equals minus 2 and one at y equals 0. f of x equals e to the x plus 3 has a domain of x e r a range of f of x e r, f of x is greater than 3, and it's 1 to 1 with an asymptote of y equals 3. f of x equals ln x minus 2 has a domain of x e r, x is greater than 2, a range of f x e r, and it's 1 to 1 with an asymptote of x equals 2. Inverse functions. If a function f of x turns the value a into b, then the inverse function f minus 1 x will always turn the b back into the a. It follows that only one-to-one -one functions have inverses, or many-to-one functions, once their domains have been restricted appropriately. The domain of a function is the range of the inverse, and the range of a function is the domain of the inverse. The graphs of a function and its inverse are reflections in the line y equals x. A function which is the same as its inverse, for example f of x equals 8 minus x, it's called self-inverse. The basic recommended approach to find the inverse for a function is as follows. Firstly, we interchange the y's and x's. We make y the subject again, and then we finish off by writing f minus 1 x equals. In our first example, we have y equals 3x minus 1 over x plus 4. When we interchange the x's and y's, that gives us x equals 3y minus 1 over y plus 4. 
we multiply both sides by y plus 4, multiply out the brackets, and then get all the y's on the same side. So we have 1 plus 4x equals 3y minus xy. We factorise the y out and divide by the 3 minus x. And then we write our final answer as f minus 1x is 1 plus 4x over 3 minus x. We can check to see if this makes sense. In the original function, if we substitute x equals 9, that gives us 26 over 13, which is 2. And in the inverse function, if we stick x as 2, we get y is 9, which suggests that we are correct. Our second example involves exponentials and logarithms. So y equals e to the 2x plus k. Interchanging the x's and y's gives us x equals e to the 2y plus k. We take away k from both sides, then we take logs, so we've got 2y equals ln x minus k, and then we finish off by dividing by 2, giving a final answer of f minus 1x is half ln x minus k. Composite functions. When a function is inserted into another function, we create a composite function, a function of a function. The type of function you would use the chain rule to differentiate. The function fgx is created by substituting g of x into f of x. The function ffx, or f squared x, is created by substituting fx into itself. To evaluate fg3, firstly find g3, then substitute the answer into f of x. Example. Let f of x equals x squared minus 2, and g of x equals 2x plus 5. g of 3 is 11, so fg3 is f11, which is 119. f of 3 is 7, so gf3 is g7, which is 19. fgx is 2x plus 5 squared minus 2, which gives us 4x squared plus 20x plus 23. And gfx is 2 lots of x squared minus 2 plus 5, which is 2x squared plus 1. Note that fgx does not equal gfx. And we can use fg3 and gf3 to check our answers. Modulus functions. The modulus of a quantity, whether it be an x value or a whole function, is the positive value of that quantity. So if the quantity is already positive, it won't change. But if the quantity is negative, it will be made positive. The modulus of A is written as A between two vertical lines. You need to be able to draw modulus graphs of the type y equals mod f of x and y equals f of mod x and you need to be able to solve equations with moduli in them. Modulus graph y equals mod fx. Anything above the x-axis doesn't change but anything below the x-axis is reflected in the x-axis as can be seen in the graph. Modulus graph y equals f of mod x. Anything on the right of the y-axis doesn't change. Anything on the left of the y-axis is removed completely and replaced with a reflection of what is on the right of the y-axis, as can be seen in this graph. Modulus equations. For an equation of the form mod ax plus b equals mod cx plus d, there are several possible techniques available. You could plot accurate graphs and find their intersection points. You could square both sides and solve the resulting quadratic equation. You could solve ax plus b equals cx plus d, assuming they're the same sign, and then ax plus b is the negative of cx plus d, assuming they're different signs. Modulus equation example. Mod 2x plus 3 equals mod x minus 6. If we draw the graphs accurately, we can see that they intersect at x equals minus 9 and x equals 1. Alternatively, we could square both sides. This gives us 2x plus 3 squared equals x minus 6 squared. Multiplying out, we get 4x squared plus 12x plus 9 equals x squared minus 12x plus 36. This simplifies to 3x squared plus 24x minus 27 is 0. Dividing by 3, we get x squared plus 8x minus 9 is 0. And then we factorise and solve. Finally, solving the two linear ways, Firstly, we just have ax plus b equals cx plus d, which assumes they're the same sign. This gives us 2x plus 3 equals x minus 6, and so x is minus 9. We also have ax plus b being the negative of cx plus d, assuming different signs, which gives us 2x plus 3 is minus, in brackets, x minus 6, which leads to x equals 1. Graph transformations. 
There are four basic types of graph transformations in addition to their combinations and the sketching of modulus graphs. The four are these. y equals f of x plus a, where the graph is translated a to the left. y equals f of x minus a would move to the right. y equals f of x plus a, the graph is translated a upwards. Again, y equals f of x minus a would move downwards. y equals f kx, the graph is squashed k times along the x-axis. And y equals k f of x, the graph is stretched k times along the y-axis. We finish with examples of these graph transformations shown as sketches using the number 2 to translate and stretch.